paid soul and uh well welcome back to serious fall glades or well what's left of it this is the battle for azeroth beta this is the latest build and we can finally take a look at the aftermath of the initial well the initial bloodletting of the battle for azeroth expansion uh right now i'm i'm able to fly the scenario is over um it's it's long gone and we are able to in fact go back to the Ender City and to Terrace Fall Glaze to just take a look at the devastation. And well, before I go over to the Ender City, let's take a look at poor Brill. There's pretty much nothing left of it. The place was raised to the ground, just as we saw in the uh, Battle for Lordaeron campaign, if you had played through the Alliance version of it. Although nobody's here, no signs of life at all. Uh, well, okay, I take that back. There's like some of this stuff over here. Other than that, though, Things are just, well, they're not in a very good state at all. Everything's on fire. Everything is, well, more dead than dead. But uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's kind of go back here. Just kind of survey the damage uh, that we're seeing here. Towards the back here, or I'm sorry, towards the north, uh, we can see all these Alliance ships that are uh, still here. We're not quite sure why. Uh, maybe these were abandoned, maybe uh, this whole plague thing that had happened caused everyone to flee, maybe everyone had died and everyone was teleported out. Uh, but we do see quite a ships out here. Okay, I can't actually fly back here. I had to download a new client, so some of the assets might not look very complete here. But we do see that there are still, um, kind of, a number of ships out here. I'm guessing that this is just for ambiance and just for visuals. But doesn't seem like these, well, maybe some of these are interactable. I can I can still at least kind of go inside some of these places and see what's good. But still no signs of life. No bodies, no corpses. And, uh, well, to be honest, I don't think that there's uh, much of a sign that, or at least I don't really expect there to be a bunch of corpses lying around here. I think this is this is all just for show. These just, happens, these just uh, happen to be complete models that wanted to be displayed for the purpose of, well, just showing off what's going on. It is a little curious that all these ships are here, especially when the Alliance so desperately needs ships to the point where they wanted to recruit the good people of Kul Taras into the, into the fight. But anyway, let me, uh, well, well hello, Argus. Kind of funny. It's, it looks particularly bright in, uh, well, in this kind of situation. I wonder how long it's going to stay up there, actually. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, head over. Do a quick pass through, see if there happens to be anyone here. Well, still nobody. So let's approach the Ender City itself. We can see that um, over here on the on the east side, we see that part of the wall that's been busted open. We can. Well, let's just go through the front and then see what happens. You can see here that this green fuzz is starting to glow around me, and let me show my UI. I actually have my res sickness still, because I'm dying. The way I got here was by teleporting from Silvermoon, and by the time I got here, and once everything loaded up, I died. Much as you see my health bar slowly draining in the way. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into things, but I did try to go uh, inside the Undercity itself and was unsuccessful. I tried to go, I basically just tried to go in and there was like some invisible barrier in my way. Oh, and as a quick FYI, um, this damage doesn't show up. I don't have a debuff. I'm not, I don't see anything in my combat meters, nothing. And when I did die, it didn't give me any, uh, it didn't give me any clickable notification that let me see much of anything. Oh man, okay, well, I guess there goes, uh, there goes that plan. Uh, maybe I can kind of climb through, crawl through. Nope, doesn't look like it. So it looks like that's it. The Undercity is pretty much inaccessible, aside from this husk uh, that we see outside. Now, it's, it's a little weird, um, given that at least we kind of presume that the Undersea would have been totally destroyed or blown up, blown to total smithereens uh, from the looks of the explosives that were set aside and all that stuff. Uh, the fact that it's still standing does make it, well, 
a little curious as to what the actual state of the Ender City is going to be once this thing hits live servers. For all we know, the Ender City still might explode. Where it's just not a, well, it's just not been drawn in that state yet. I'd like, well, unlike Teldrassil, that place is you know clearly gone. Um, I guess I guess the difference is that this place is located on land, so maybe they maybe Blizzard just didn't want to blow the whole thing up, even though, well, they blew a whole lot of it up as it is. I am curious whether or not uh, this land is going to develop at all, or you know, if anything is going to start growing back, if the Alliance are going to start encroaching and otherwise maybe start rebuilding or trying to restore, clean the blight, that sort of thing, because at least from there are some small indicators that we're seeing throughout the beta that the Alliance might be starting to uh, encroach or otherwise move on other territories while the Horde are trying to defend this area. And I'm pretty sure the same thing is happening over on Kalimdor as well. So this is pretty much it. It's pretty much the scenario uh, that we saw in the Battle for Lordaeron just without any NPCs and a pretty uninhabitable Undercity that, well, that's no longer functional. So that's pretty much all I have to show you. So please like and subscribe to help support the channel and for and to see more of this and all things Warcraft. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Mm -hmm.